Welcome back, episode two of the Conservatory Refit. Today is the turn of the arch and we're going to put a nice casing around this. That sounds interesting, stick around. I'm going to be using 18 millimeter MDF, moisture resistant MDF to be precise, and we'll talk more about that when we come to look at the material. So I want to now work out the lowest side of the arch, whether that's my lowest point or whether this is my lowest point, because that's the point we're going to work from. So I'm just bringing in my spirit level. We now know that the arch is sloping in this direction. It's sloping from the back towards the front, towards the camera. And I also know that it's sloping from here, low point, curving up in this direction on the overall arch. So that means the lowest point, the point that's nearest to the floor, is actually this point on the arch. So I want to give myself a reference line, a marking line, and that's going to be 18 millimeters down from this top. That's where my material is going to come in. So I measure down 18 millimeters, which is about there. I now want to work out what level looks like on the other side of the wall. I now want to just line my spirit level up with the mark we've made on that side, which is there. Level up my spirit level. And now I can transfer my mark to this side here. And then transfer that line across. And all things being equal, which they're not guaranteed to be, because there's no guarantee the walls are square, that should give me a, a level surface and it more or less does now don't worry too much i don't know if this side of the wall is square or that side of the wall is square or whether these walls are running off so i'm not using this mark here for anything else than to give you an indication and a visual of what we're working towards i'll be working on this mark here on this side of the wall and this mark here on this side of the wall I want to rip some material down to this width of the arch. So we're going to take a measurement now and find out what this looks like. So at the top here, I've got 328. Midpoint here, I've got 321. And at the bottom point down here, I've got 321 as well. So from this point downwards, this is pretty parallel at 3, 2, 1. It's flaring out by 7 millimetres towards the top. I can actually feel with my hand that bulge up there. Anyway, so we need to work out what we're going to do with that. We'll measure the other side as well. At the top here, I've got 3, 2, 5. Midpoint, 3, 2, zero and the bottom point three two five so this one is three two five at the top and three two five at the bottom and it's bellying in in the middle to around about three hundred and twenty the overhead piece i have three two seven in the middle i have three two four and on this end here, we have three, two, four. So again, this is all flaring out into this corner of the room here. And once again, I can feel, I can feel that bulge around that corner. What I'm going to do is to make all of this, this widest point here, this 328 millimeter mark. And that will allow me to insert into here a MDF frame that will be 328 millimeters wide and square. Yeah, the walls are quite a ways out and that's obviously a compromise to how we would normally want to work, but hey, in houses you're never going to get the perfect scenario. So my next job is to rip down some lengths on my MDF to 328 millimeters. So we'll do that now. Just drop some bits of wood on the floor here, and that's purely to keep this off the decking. And the first thing I want to do is to just cut off this factory edge. 
Word of warning, you'll find that people do staple things to the edge of these boards, so just check there's no staples. We know it's 18 millimeters, so we're gonna set the TS55 up to a 19 millimeter depth of cut, and we'll just take off this edge here. There's a lot of opinions about cutting MDF board. Normal MDF board has formaldehyde inside, uses the glue, and that's the, you know, the resin that bonds the material together. And when you cut that, you're releasing that formaldehyde into the air, and over time, that can be carcinogenic, so it's not a good thing to breathe in. However, moisture-resistant MDF uses a different bonding material, and if you're buying this from a quality supplier who's got a known source, then you don't have that problem. It still kicks up a lot of dust, so always cut it in a well-ventilated space. Doesn't get much better than a nice day here. And I'm using dust extraction as well. If you're cutting a lot of this, then also go with the dust mask. I'm not doing that this time, but you make your decision for yourself. So with the straight edge made, I'm now gonna measure in that 328 millimeters and cut a few strips. That's all three pieces now ripped to width. So we now need to work out the length. I'm gonna come in with the top one first and we'll just work out the length of that one. And then I'm gonna use clamps to put that into position and that'll allow me to measure down the two sides. So, one, seven, four, two on that side, one, seven, four, two. And on this side, I'm looking for one, seven, three. So we'll make this one, seven, two, eight. Yeah, one, seven, two, seven, I think we will make this one. One, seven, two, seven. And that will give me a loose fit. I'm gonna start by just squaring an end off and then we'll measure down from that end to give us the final cut. So I'm making sure I'm tight against this fence, not really concerned by this long fence, but I do wanna be tight against here. And then we'll make this cut. Now I want to use the same reference edge against my fence, so I'm just gonna spin this over carefully, like so. And now I measure 1727 from this end that we've just cut. Give myself an extra pair of hands. I'm just gonna put a clamp on here. So I'm gonna level that up now, just using some shims. And these are the same plastic shims we use around the edge of the floorboards, so good job. So first of all, I'm lining up my lowest corner. Then we'll check this for level. And this needs to come down a little bit. And that's perfectly aligned now. And now to see how we're doing for square across the arch. And that edge needs to come down ever so slightly. And similarly, that edge needs to come down ever so slightly. Looks good. There. So, we now have the header board set square into the frame. And you can really see now the gap and how much the arch is is running out, which is okay, I guess. 2.008 meters, 2.017. So there's now less than a millimeter variance. 2.017 here, 2.008 there. So 0.9 millimeter variance across the arch. I now want to cut the piece of wood for this edge and similarly cut the piece of wood for that edge. So that now is nice and square and level, and that side of the arch is now square. So I'm just gonna to start to label these things up now. This is gonna be my reference 
edge, face, face. This is going to be part, this is going to be joint A to joint A. And on the back side here, I'm just going to put joint B to joint B. And I know that I want this edge flush. So I'm going to put two marking lines on there and a scoring line here. And we're going to secure this with a couple of pocket hole screws and that's going to look good, I think. So now we do the same on this side. That's all nice and square as well. So that looks pretty good now. It's looking square, it's all looking tight, it's all looking tidy. Next job is we'll take the frame out, take the clamps off, and we'll just use pocket hole screws to secure the frame at the top where those joints are. We can then refrit the frame, but this time without using the shims on the floor, so it will rest on the floor. And if our measurement's good, that should give us that squareness that we're looking for. That will also widen the gap at the top, and then we can put wooden shims at the top and use that to secure the top into the archway itself. And that'll be a combination of shims, nails, and probably a strong adhesive. We'll then shim the left hand side, and that is pretty much good. Um, so let's do that then. Now, if our measurements are good, this should fit into this hole quite nicely. So that's it. So that's now in that hole and it's all looking pretty square and tidy. So the next job is we now need to put some shims across the top of this unit and that will just wedge it into place. So the way we'll do this, we'll wedge the top in first of all. So we'll create some wedges and we'll just knot those in to make sure that's all nice and firm. And then we can cut some wedges here and slide them through and then we'll nail through this MDF into the wall through the wedge itself and that will give us a nice solid structure. So this technique is working pretty well for us. I've just clamped in the straight edge here, this yellow spirit level, and I can see that I'm still straight, so everything's nice and square. And I'll just keep putting shims across and fixing that in place with the nail gun. And that's making a really firm structure that's not gonna go anywhere, and that is excellent. So we don't need to use any adhesives on this one. It's working out. If that was still loose, the nails and the nails weren't biting, then absolutely I'd be using adhesive as well on this, but I don't need to do that. So I'll now put on some more shims in, probably one there. I'm thinking about one there, and I'm thinking about one there. So exactly the same technique. I've now squared this side up, once again using the yellow straight edge to just hold it all nice and plumb, weighed it up and that's perfect. So now I can cut the wedges in for this one and we can go ahead and do the same procedure and nail that into position. Looking good, eh? Looking good. So at this point, the microphone decided to break. So I'll now move to voiceover. You can see I've got the frame in place. It's all shimmed, it's all nailed and it's looking really nice and tidy now. And it's so secure, really has locked together well, really pleased with this. 
I'm now just taking my set square and I'm just scribing a line right around the outside of the arch. And this is about two millimeters in from the edge. And this line I'm going to use to position the architrave that we're now going to put onto the arch. With the line scribed, I'm now just taking the tape measure and I'm measuring between those two lines. And what I'm doing here is measuring up for the shortest part of the architrave at the top. And that's about that big. I then use that measurement to cut the architrave down to size. You can see the nice 45 degree angles at the end. And here I'm just offering it up, making sure it fits between those two lines. And visually, it all looks nice and square. And from this angle, it really does look quite good. Pleased with that. So I've just used a couple of clamps again, same trick as we used last time to give myself some helping hands. And I'm just resting the architrave on top of those now. And this is starting to get the thing square, ready for fixing. I can then level the right hand side up using a third clamp to hold that flat against the line and here I'm just bringing in a fourth clamp over to the left hand side and again lining up against the line that we scored earlier on and just holding that into position. All looking good, I can now come in with my trusty spirit level and I'm just checking that up for level and yeah that's looking pretty good and yep I'm happy with that. Now these walls aren't the flattest of walls, it's not the best plastering job I've seen. And what's happening here is the plaster actually bulges out as it comes into this arch. I want the architrave to lie flat against the framework that we've just made. So I'm just coming back in with my shims, the same shims we used on the floor that we're using everywhere to be honest. And I'm just shimming out the back of this architrave and that's purely so it's all going to sit nice and flat against the panel and the framework that we've made. And with that all shimmed out and everything nice and level and lined up to the lines we made earlier on, it's just a matter of coming in and fixing in place with our nail gun. Then remove the clamps, have a cup of tea, stand back, admire my work, and that's it. That's fitted into position. Now obviously where those shims are, it does leave a gap at the back and we're going to come in further down the line and just fill that with some expanding glue, the expanding foam, and that will just secure that into position and allow for that awful dip that's in the plastered wall. Now this may look like I'm having a rest, but what I'm actually doing here is I'm using my digital ruler to take a measurement from the floor to the outside edge of that architrave. And you can just see the red dot bouncing on the wall there as I set this thing up and line it up. And I'm using the digital ruler rather than the tape measure because I want a very precise reading on that internal corner of the arch. Write it on the wall so I remember what it is I'm doing. Using that measurement, I once again trim the architrave to length, cutting a nice 45 degree angle. And if my measurements and my cutting have been precise, this should fit beautifully onto that corner of the arch and making a nice joint at the top. And it looks like it does. So I'm pleased with that. That's a good job. So I've now used a clamp to hold it in place at the top there. And I've used a spirit level to make sure things are level. And that's all looking pretty good. So the next thing, obviously, is to have a little bit more tea. So while I'm drinking that, I'll survey the job. Now it's simply a matter of clamping this at the bottom and then going ahead and nailing it into place. One final check. Yep, and I'm happy with that. It all looks good. So back in with a nail gun and I can just tack that into position. And that's looking really, really quite nice and neat. So yeah, pleased with that. So once this one's fixed, we go ahead and we do the same for the left hand side. And there you have it, it's all nailed into position. Now it's all firm, it's all fixed, it's all level, it's all square and straight. I can just drop out these shims and that's going to allow me to put some of the expanding glue between the back of the architrave and the wall. And that's just to secure it all finally into position because you never know when somebody's going to get the urge to swing on this. Happy with that good job, what do you think? And with all that in position, I then turn my attention to the other side of the arch. Exactly the same process, score the lines, take the measurements, cut the top piece and get that into position. Then use that to measure the left and the right pieces, cut those and get those into position. 
So it's all complete. I've now got the architrave on both sides of the arch and I'm just coming in with a small countersink and just making sure that all the nail heads are recessed below the surface. And finally, with all the nail heads recessed into the architrave or into the MDF panels, I can then just come back in with some decorator's cork and wipe over the holes. And with all the holes filled, it's just a matter of having another cup of tea admiring my handiwork and I'll let this go off overnight and come back in tomorrow and rub it all down. I can then do the final job which is just giving the MDF a quick coat of primer and the job is good to go. Okay so job is pretty much finished on the arch now. Case works in, all the architraves in both sides, all the nails are now countersunk and everything's been filled with decorator's cork. I'll allow all that to go off and then towards the end of the job, once I've finished the skirting board, I'll come back in, give everything a sand down and then I'll just give it all a coat of uh, MDF primer and then it's ready for the decorator to do his or her business with. What I do want to quickly point out is you can probably see just up here there's a little bit of shiny filler type substance. That's actually known as expanding glue. I don't know what other brands do it, but the one I use tends to be a Gorilla Glue. It's like any other wood glue, but this one expands when it's contacted with moisture. So what I've done, I've sprayed inside the frame, and then I've just put the glue inside there, and the glue expands, and it gives me a solid bond, and that's just beginning to support the back edge of this wood. I wouldn't normally do that, but I've got a huge problem on this particular arch, because the plaster runs smooth and then it bellies out for some reason as it gets to the edge of the arch. Now, if I were to try and put this flat on the wall, that means it would pivot out and it wouldn't be square to this frame here. And I want this profile to be square. That squareness is an important aesthetic. It's one of those things that if it is square, no one will ever, ever notice and go, oh look, that's square, that's very nice. If it's not square, people will always be looking at it thinking, is that sloping? Is that, is that quite right? So the way I do it in this situation, we make this arch, the casework, slightly wider than the problem area to give me that uniform distance. And then I fit this so that's flush to the casing and therefore that then becomes square. And that's why we nailed in at this profile here um, and that gave us a very solid joint. But I don't want that gap behind the architrave. And I also wanted to support the back of the architrave. If I had nailed through here this big solid piece as well, which is quite tempting to do, that would then pivot this and that would open the gap at the front and it wouldn't be square. Now, although you can then come along and you can use a filler, a decorator's cork to fill this line, over time wood expands and contracts, even MDF, and that would open that joint up and probably your five six seven eight months down the line looks perfect at first but then that gap would open and you'd be forever chasing that with filler this way this is a tight bond between here and here and then you alleviate that problem so yeah expanding glue expands on moisture like twice its depth and it means i can use a chemical reaction to give me that tight bond rather than the physical pressure that you tend to have to use with contact Adhesives, so Gorilla do that and it's well worth knowing about it and have it in your arsenal. If the gaps get too big, you can go down the expanding foam route, which is a similar sort of thing that I'm sure you've seen. But I really don't like that stuff. It's, uh, it's messy, it expands out of control, it gives you one heck of a cleanup job. But on this one, once everything's set and dry, I'll be just taking my sander and I'll be feathering in that glue round the top there into the wall and the plaster so the decorator then gets a clean run down to that and it'll look really pristine and beautiful once it's finished and it will never move and we'll never get those cracks. So that's pretty much it. Next job is I'm gonna look at the skirting board and we'll see you next time.